Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Will on Safety. Uh, today, we're going to have another another look at another toolbox talk. And today's toolbox talk is on flammables. Okay, so improper storage and handling of flammable chemicals and failure to recognise and control ignition sources have and continue to account for many of the cat catastrophic accidents involving flammable liquids used in the manufacturing industry. Okay, so flammables then, what are they? So a combustible is a, a combustible substance is one that catches fire and then that burns very easily. But a flammable substance is one that continues to burn even after the ignition source has been removed. So there's a bit of a difference there. So it's really important that we don't get confused between combustible substances and flammable substances. There is a difference in the definitions, okay? Um, what we also need to determine is the flammability of a combustible liquid. And we'll do that by sort of considering the following things. So flash point is the first one to consider. That's the lowest temperature at which vapours or gases will ignite. Uh, next thing to consider is the fire point, And that's the temperature at which combustible liquid gives off its vapours. Um, next is the minimum concentration of extinguishing agents needed to extinguish the fire. So, for example, if we're using a CO2 extinguisher or maybe an AFFF extinguisher, you know, what's the minimum con concentration of, uh, of that agent that will be needed to extinguish the, uh, the fire due to the flammable substance? Um, and finally, another thing to consider um, when we're determining flammability is the combustion rate. Okay, it's extremely important for employees to realise that the liquid itself doesn't burn, but it's vapours which are invisible, they're generally heavier than air, okay? The vapours settle on the floor and they're moved around the facility by airflow. Always consult the safety data sheets uh, provided by the manufacturers of flammable substances to determine the flammability of that particular liquid. Okay, so Obviously, when we're talking about vapours, um, it's really, really important that we keep tight controls on those flammable liquids. Um, and we can do that in a number of ways. You have uh, in-flam lockers, which are generally the sort of yellow lockers. Um, they're sort of fireproof lockers. A lot of them have um, built-in um, sort of uh, ventilation. So you can use those type of inflam lockers to store your flammable materials. But we need to be really, really careful about ignition sources because obviously it wouldn't take a lot um, for an ignition or uh, ignition, excuse me, I can't get my words out today, an ignition source um, to, to set that fire going when it comes to flammable liquids, okay? So the types of ignition sources we should be keeping flammables away from consist of some of the following. So open flames, it goes without saying we shouldn't be storing flammable liquids in and around anywhere that has an open flame. So, you know, um, manufacturing ovens, that type of thing, some of those have, have open flames. There shouldn't be any flammable stored near those pieces of equipment. Electrical switches. Obviously, any sort of, um, you know, electrical boards or electrical systems, we should try and keep those flammable liquids away from. It doesn't take a lot uh, for a short in electrical circuit to cause a mini fire. That can then create a open flame and then we're going to have a big issue. OK, next is open motors and they create heat uh, due to the friction of those motors. And then again, that can um, be an, an ignition source and cause ignition to these flammable liquids. 
static electricity again if that static electricity is charged it doesn't take a lot to get a spark if you have a spark um, you know around flammable liquids what can happen is you know that that spark effectively will ignite that liquid um, friction and mechanical sparks is next uh, for the same reasons smoking i know most of our facilities now globally have gone no smoking but you know we need to be keeping a check on that and making sure people are only smoking in those areas where they're authorized to do so you know it might look a safe area to have a cigarette but you don't know what's being stored there and if there are a lot of flambles in that area maybe some of those containers have lids missing and that vapor is escaping okay so we need to be really careful about smoking heat guns just because of the uh, ambient temperature of those heat guns uh, that can cause vapors to ignite cutting and welding again you know goes without saying cutting and welding creates sparks those sparks can very easily ignite um you know uh, liquids and vapors uh, so they shouldn't be stored near any of those um processes and radiant heat so we need to keep a real check on temperature you know especially as it is in the uk at the moment it's absolutely baking hot we've got you know unseen temperatures all around the uk so we just need to make sure that when we're storing our flammable um, liquids they're kept in cool areas okay because radiant heat can be an issue um, so today as you go around your work work areas as you go around your manufacturing facilities just take a moment to look around what flammable liquids are you using firstly on site maybe you've got acetones and that type of thing on site okay have a look what you're using and have a look what you're storing you know are there any ignition sources around are they stored properly away from those ignition sources take action today and that might prevent a disaster occurring in the future that's it for today's toolbox talk i hope you found this video interesting um if you've got anything you wish me to comment uh, to comment or cover okay leave me a uh, comment below and i'll try and cover all those subjects you'd like me to in terms of videos going forward um, if you haven't already and if you're not a subscriber please help my community grow hit that subscription link it is free to do it just enables me to grow the community that i've started to build um, give me a like and hit that notification bell if you do that what will happen is it'll notify you whenever i post new content i'm trying to post content at least twice a week um, but yeah that's it in terms of the toolbox talk for today remember folks be safe by choice and not by chance Take care of yourselves. I hope you have a great day. Bye for now.